ready, guys. There it is. We'll float off their feet. Uh, I don't even know how to say your name properly, so you say it first so I don't mess it up. I am Fekas. Fekas. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> so how's it going? Uh, are, are we on there now? Oh, uh, yeah, we're on there now. I don't hey, know. Hey, we are on there. Welcome, everyone. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Joshua Fekas Quest. That's how you pronounce that one. I am here with Esruff. That's how you pronounce yours, correct? Yes, it's Esruff. Uh, Stefan Roughly is my name as well. I don't have all that camera stuff set up, though, so we're good to go, though. But we're here. We look like we're almost ready to go. All right. Fantastic. Um, yeah, it's going to be a, a pretty exciting game. It's the first uh, junior varsity game of the season going on right now, uh, at least um, the first one being broadcasted, this one being between Pitzer College and Drexel. Drexel, you may recognize, I, they've been here, I think, every year. I mean, it hasn't been broken up between varsity or junior varsity, but uh, tonight it is a junior varsity game. So this is the junior varsity team of Drexel going against Pitzer College, which is, you know, of course, the Claremont College is all making up of the five tiny colleges, one of them being Pitzer College, and they're going to be the ones representing here tonight. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting matchup. I mean, JV, you know, we're not really sure what we're going to expect here, obviously. Uh, it looks like we got a, a kind of wide variety of uh, skill ranges going on here. Ugh. Yeah, no, it should be an exciting game no matter what. Um, yeah, again, Drexel, they've been here. They know the, they know the routine. They know how everything goes. Um, I expect them to, you know, come out firing. They, they've actually lost their first game in the Junior Varsity League so far of CSL, so they're looking for a little bit of retribution. They want to come back. They want to get that... Uh, go to that 1-1. One, one. They want to put Pitzer College into the 0-1 uh, bracket, and uh, they want to, you know, obviously progress in here because, well, I mean, it's not the varsity team, so you're, you're not getting, you're not competing on Rise Grand Stage or anything, but you still are competing for CSL's prize, um, the, the, you know, the recognition, all that sorts of, th uh, those sorts of things as well because you can get a team, especially in these colleges, with how prevalent um, scholarships and things are right now, if you get a, a, a college that has a very uh, standard, uh, uh, stable, I should say, stable varsity team, along with a stable junior varsity team, that's what colleges like. They like to have representation on all levels and all fronts of as much as possible. All right. Well, let's see here. It looks like we have... We're just on the static overlay right now, though, because it looks like... Uh, are we waiting on the fire alarm again? Per CSL tradition, we always get stuck on the... Uh, issues as we're about to start up the game so it looks like we are going to yeah they're still waiting on that stuff so i'm gonna go back to oh, music wow, that's guys actually, that's a legit issue yeah no i wasn't kidding that was actually a legit issue that's happening in chat right now chat <laughs> oh gosh so yeah um we're gonna go back to music guys for a little bit because i guess uh one of the dorms is having a fire alarm so obviously we don't want them to be in any danger so we'll be back shortly i'll throw it over to some more music and we'll continue after that guys sorry about the delay Alrighty, it looks like we are back again, and this time we are actually going to be into the draft. Let me get the right screen up there, and it looks like there we go. We're into it, guys, and we are going to have... Actually, I have this, the sides messed up. Drexel is actually on the other side. Let me fix that. While that is happening, though, the bands are going through. Thresh and uh, Zed being banned out uh, so far. One, uh, you know, uh, one from each team, obviously, because it does go back and forth. But 
Uh, we're gonna see what uh, we see, uh, see what Pitzer decides to ban next. As Pitzer is the one banning Thresh, Drexel banning the Zed. We'll see. The Thresh ban I feel is interesting. That's not something you see every day. I mean, I guess it can be. You know, the hook the hook mechanic is something that people can always be scared of. Like same as Blitzcrank. But game yeah, actually, well, comes out too. Yeah, fun, so fun fact about <clears throat> my co-caster here, uh, Esruf, he's actually a Vainglory caster, but he does play main support in League of Legends. So, uh, yeah, uh, you know, very much so. Uh, Thresh, not not a particularly um, popular band. I, have, I definitely don't see it in solo queue. Uh, more than likely a targeted band against a Rykira 13. Uh, that's the only thing I can really think of as far as taking away that Thresh. As we talk about that, though, another uh, uh, ban on the bot side, two bans on the bot side, actually, in addition to that Thresh, the Tristana and the Caitlyn. Caitlyn being taken away by Pitzer and Drexel taking away that Tristana. But we also have the third ban, or I guess it was technically the second ban from Pitzer, as the Gangplank. So going to be taking that one away. More than likely from the top lane, but we do see the Gangplank going flex every now and then in the mid as well. Yeah, Gangplank's been really popular in some of the higher-up leagues, too, and it looks like, actually, speaking of popular characters, here comes Vayne as the first pick coming out for Pitzler. Or, how, you say it again, because I'm going to mess up that word so many times. Pitzer. 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 There we go. Yeah. There are some colleges I just, I, I get lost at what their names are pronounced, so Pitzer with the Vayne pickup. That's a really prominent pickup, but also it did just get nerfed today, too, if you think about it. It did. It did. It wasn't a hu absolutely a huge nerf. I don't think it was. It didn't really change the way that Vayne is played, and I think that's what they are going to rely on. Squishy Carry is going to be on that Vayne. It's been very popular. So, uh, yeah, even with the nerf, with its popularity soaring so much in a, uh, you know, from the preseason to uh, about yesterday, uh, there's been a lot of Vayne play. So that might be something Squishy Carry is just familiar with right now. Is comfortable with uh, dancing around, tumbling around, doing as much as possible uh, in the back lines as the Vayne and uh, might not just want to give up that comfort that he's built up over the past, uh, how, how long has preseason been, like two months now? Yeah, it feels uh, like just, it forever. Just, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like three years. So, going to be taking that vein into the bot lane. Don't see the support just yet unless they pull, pull out something really tricky like a Ziggs. I don't think we're going to be seeing that here today, but a Ziggs has been locked in uh, by, by the mid laner of Pitzer. Probably not going to say that name too much. I'll just probably just say Ziggs because I just don't know the connotation of that name. Either way, Jarvan in the jungle as well for Pitzer. Over on the other side, though, there's going to be a Blitzcrank being uh, locked in along with Sejuani and a Fizz for Captain Communist. Yeah, how do you feel about the Fizz and the Ziggs complex or matchup? I feel like it's going to be really interesting to watch just because they're both doing – they're normally very vastly different types of characters. One likes to sit back and one likes to dive. So we might have a really explosive mid lane going on into this. Yeah, and you're seeing that uh, the, the middle is Ziggs. He is hovering over the, um, well, so far, with the summoner spell, the cleanse, and that's more than likely going to be for Chumbo Waters. Of course, uh, Captain Communist on Fizz. If any Fizz wants to dive and just destroy as much as possible, they can tower dive, they can playful trickster out, they can get uh, in and out, maneuver without taking as much damage. They can also burst down Ziggs at level 6 and more than likely one-shot him with this full combo. So uh, Ziggs is going to try to uh, stop that as much as possible. And yeah, it's it's gonna be up to uh, up to the mid laner of Pitzer to really play safe and keep himself from allowing the uh, the fizz from to snowball. Because uh, if he does, it's gonna be really hard for even even squishy carry on Vayne, who can you know tumble around and get out of harm's way, even go stealth. It's gonna be even hard for him if, if Chump of the Waters lands on him. If uh, Captain Communist is fed, it's gonna be a very bad day for Pitzer. Yeah, it can come into a really lot of rotations too with Fizz is what you were talking about. It, that his, his explosive capabilities is he can kill an ADC pretty quickly, especially if he gets the, the snowball rolling early. So it'll be interesting to see how that mid matchup kind of depicts the course of this game. And now it looks like the ADC is finally going to be picked up for the side of Drexler. They're, they haven't decided yet. They're kind of going through them all right now, it looks like. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's plenty of options. There's a lot of ADCs. I tech, some people say there's only five ADCs. If you go to the Collegiate meta, there's way more than five ADCs. Uh, that are actually viable. Uh, uh, there's so much in in, in co uh, collegiate meta that you can do that just throw your opponent off, and, and a lot of times nets a win. So uh, not really anything too, I guess, too unique coming out on the side of Drexel for ADC, but does have the Ash going to be locked in. That's going to be an Ash and a Blitzcrank in the bot side, along with the Vayne and the Leona as Squishy Carry locks in the Leona, uh, the Leona for his support. Yeah, and I feel like Iona made a lot of big plays at, like, Worlds, and that's when we saw some more uh, prominent of her showing back up into the meta. But she's really good with the new rune system as well, I feel like. She's got, and, and she's in a fairly not, uh, she's not in a bad uh, matchup, though, as well, because I feel like 
most people like to pick Leona, and then you can just counter it with something ranged, like a Janna or something like that, and just ruin their life. But in this instance, I feel like the bot lane is going to be kind of interesting to see if if uh, the Vayne and Leona, Leona can get ahead, then Ash and Blitz could be in some trouble because Ash does struggle a little bit early, and without some real peel besides the knockup from the Blitzcrank, it's going to be kind of interesting to see how Ash stays alive when this Leona wants to make those diving plays. And then we saw yeah. the Nautilus picked up for the top lane as their last pick for. Uh, yeah, I was going to say not just the Leona. You also have the uh, the uh, flag and drag into Cataclysm from the Jarvan, and uh, Nautilus can can. Um, alt into the back lines pretty easily too once everyone's distracted. Now with that being said, if everyone dives, if everyone from the pit side of Pitzer dives on to uh, Miracle or, or whoever's in the back lines, that is going to leave Squishy Carry very exposed which means it has to play very very careful. Vayne you can do that with. Like I said earlier, you can tumble, you can even condemn people away, and you can go stealth. So there are a lot of tools in the arsenal of a Vayne to be able to stay uh, very safe, but Yes, again, if you land Chum of the Waters on a, on a if, if Fizz even gets two kills early on, you land Chum of the Waters on the vein, it's more than likely going to result in a very dead vein. But we're going to see how it goes because we are going to actually get back into lobby. So don't worry about what I'm saying. This might all just be false, anyways. Yeah, I don't know what just happened. It looks like we lost somebody in the middle of it. So we're going to transition back on over here. I don't know exactly what's going to happen. We're going to figure out what's going on real quick. We'll put my face up because I don't have uh, Fegas' face up because we don't have the camera set up just quite yet. But we can look at my my lovely faces. I look to see what's going on with everybody as they figure out what was going happened it looks like we just dropped one person there at the end and it looked like also as they were swapping around i wasn't sure if they were done yet but it looked like the uh, nautilus was going to go top lane or the j4 was going to go top lane and the nautilus was going to jungle i don't know if they hadn't finished swapping yet but that would have been interesting as well to see so yeah uh, we still we do have still a little bit to figure out on that one there's some speculation about what's going on but we will get back in the game as much as possible, or as soon as possible, I should say. We uh, were talking about, we actually had a meeting before this. We were talking about ways to get people to uh, view us and things like that, and we figured putting Esperoff's face on the stream would get us the most viewers at uh, a higher obviously. capacity. Yeah, that's why they're leaving me off, even though I am, my wife says I'm, I'm very gorgeous. My mom has always told me that I'm a go-getter, and people should like me for my attitude. That, that sounds like what she should tell you all the time. <laughs> I didn't know what else to go with there. I was like, "That sounds yeah, that sounds like a really nice thing to say." Wow. <laughs> well, my mom is an angel. If you talk crap about her, I might punch you. Yeah, exactly. I feel like most people are like that. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. It's all good. Um, all right. I think we're I think we're gonna be getting back into this uh, champion select very quickly as uh, yeah, it looks everyone's like ready up. I think they're just going to ban right through, it looks like, too, and we're just going to do the same draft. We'll transition back over to that one. We'll see how this goes now this time. Hopefully they just ban real quick and we get through this relatively quickly. They are technically supposed to ban the exact same champions, just oh. for documentation purposes, but as you can see, Drexel is not having that. Yeah, they, they've already decided. Yeah, I was going to say, it would make sense that they ban the right things, but, you know, it's whatever. As yeah, long... I think, yeah. As long as the, they all get the same heroes, that's the most important part. We do have this evidence on stream, too. So yeah, we, we do. So. It is an extra step in the process, but don't worry. We are dedicated for everybody on the playing field today as we finally get the picks going for the second time. And this game, this game number one is the best of three, by the way. It's the only game number one of Champion Select. And we have a Nasus locked in. So I think that Nautilus may should have been a Nasus, I believe. I guess that is the only miss pick that there was. I'm not entirely sure about that, but we'll, I'm sure we'll get an update here momentarily on what that issue is. If not, we'll just keep playing. But, you know, we'll go from there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to see if uh, Jacqueline here picks the exact same thing. Should, although there's a, a Nar pick. So, yeah, the, I guess the, the, yeah, no, was, the Nar was picked, yeah. Nar was picked, right, right, right. I was focusing a lot on uh, Pitzer's um, uh, comp last, last, game, last champion select. And uh, I forgot that the Nara was actually picked for Jockwin. Didn't actually touch on that one. The Jockwin uh, going with the Nara, so that'll be against a Nasus, not a Nautilus. Um, that that, may, one... that makes a little bit more sense to me because I feel like yeah. Nautilus would be uh, kind of just struggling the entire time against the Nara. Well, that is kind of Nara's forte, just auto attacking when you're away, and then whenever you get Mega Nara, go in, and whenever you're able to, you know, uh, stand up to the big brutes like uh, Nautilus. But by that time, you're already poked down so many so many times by auto attacks and cues from from the Nar that it's really hard to stand up to a Mega Nar. So Nasus might be a little bit better. Does have a nice sustain in his arsenal with his passive, and he can also 
just play it safe underneath tower and farm into the mid game and become that giant dog monster that uh, everyone loves and knows and knows Nasus for. Yeah, who doesn't love Nasus teleporting in and one shotting your AD carry? I mean, come on, that's like the most exciting feeling in the entire world. Yeah, dude, his uh, the runes have been really good for him. I didn't think they would be. I'm not a Nasus man, don't get me wrong. But you know, I try to every time any try, any changes to the game, I try to recognize what's going to be working, what's what's not going to be working. Uh, Nasus is one that I really didn't think about until you know he started picking up, and yeah, uh, I feel like the runes are really good for him. He can, uh, especially I mean, I've seen a few, a few variations, even something like Kleptomancy, where he just is able to sustain himself through the health pots and things that he picks up, and uh, go back with a little bit extra gold as well, and build faster into that Triforce, his main core item, which is uh, what allows him to. Uh, auto attack somebody and hit that uh, get that um half health ash or whoever he wants to auto attack nasus is actually a really big force in my opinion but we don't we don't see him too much in high competitive play but collegian i feel like he has a nice place here yeah he he i always feel like nasus is a strong champion and you can really if you have somebody that's truly good at nasus and can farm and do what they need to and has good tv timings and stuff like that a nasus can really impact a game drastically i mean even in just solo queue or something like that it can impact your game so when you have the ability to communicate with your team which i would hope that these college teams are at least in voice chat together some of them do some of them don't but uh being able to call for that tp in and stuff like that and having a nasus come down and and half health somebody important can really change the uh, team fight really quickly so yeah and not to mention he can provide a decent amount of peel or chase as well with uh, his wither which the wither is an incredible amount of slow someone like ash who doesn't have an escape Gonna have to rely on uh, Blitzcrank or maybe even Sejuani to peel for her. Uh, that's gonna be huge uh, going into these team fights, especially like I said, if Nasus gets to the back line. Ash doesn't really have much in the arsenal to really stop a Nasus. Does have the Crystalline Arrow, but that's not that's that's a very temporary uh, solution to a big problem. Yeah, it, it definitely. There's not a whole lot of peel unless they're actually using the Nar alt and the Sejuani's trying to peel for the Ash. It's going to be interesting to see how the side of uh, Drexel decides to go about this. They want to see, are they going to try and look for the picks with the Blitzcrank? Are they going to try and dive in with the Sejuani and the Nar alt with the Fizz? Or are they going to try and peel for their Ash? Because on the other side, uh, they have a vein that has Leona that wants to dive on it as well. With uh, Leona that wants to dive, a J4 wants to dive, but then they have a Zig that has a backline. So it's kind of a interesting place of where these team fights are going to get picked up i feel like uh, he's like who's going to initiate is it going to be the leona or is it going to be the blitzcrank and that's really i feel like that could depict a lot of this game is how how these teams decide to engage and where they go from there it, they're just they're not the most standard lineups obviously there's a couple curveballs in there that we're not used to seeing but i feel like the supports are going to have a big role in this game and uh unless unless one of the junglers goes off or like all the other lanes you know snowball crazily i think a lot's going to rely on the bot lanes of these two teams just because of how kind of different they are in play style yeah I very much agree and yeah we're i'm really anxious to see how because both, uh, how these teams are going to be able to engage on the rift because both teams do have a lot in their arsenal to engage and also uh, a little bit to peel as well i feel like pitzer has a little bit more to peel um, but it might not matter if they're the ones engaging. But we're going to find out in just a few moments. But before we do, I'm going to give a shout out uh, to a few things here, social medias as well as Twitch. We'll start with social media. You can actually type exp exclamation mark Discord in the chat to get uh, to join our Discord community. Also, go follow us on Twitter at C Star League and CSLLOL. You can get all the updates for Collegiate LOL on there. And uh, you can also go check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash C Star League. And I do, I said, want to give out that uh, give that shout out to twitch as well they've been here uh, pretty much since the beginning from pax west to pax east we definitely wouldn't be here without the support and help of, tw of twitch so thank you very much twitch you can go follow them twitter.com slash twitch as well as the facebook facebook.com slash twitch my name is joshua feckes quest i'm here with s rough i think we only have about probably 30 more seconds to a minute uh before we get into game so we're gonna throw it up to music real quick and we'll be back on the rift in just a moment I'm not trying to listen over too soon.
Alrighty guys, and I am now unmuted and where music is back and we are loading, finally done loading into the game and here we are guys into our first match of the JV League of Legends CSL season. And I'm I'm pretty excited. How about you, Fekas? I'm very excited. I do love uh, pretty much everything collegiate. Uh, varsity, junior, junior varsity, I'm actually really glad a junior varsity was created to give those uh, those teams that you know have a lot of dedicated players that want to compete as well and improve their gameplay. Now they have an outlet. And uh, like I said, they have, like I said earlier, they also have an outlet to bring prestige to their uh, to their college as well. So I like this. I like this a lot. I was really excited whenever the uh, junior varsity was uh, was um, thrown out there as a as a possibility. So here it is, the first broadcast of game from Collegiate Star League uh, for the junior varsity Drexel versus Pitzer. Pitzer on the blue side, Drexel on the red side. Looks like we have a pause already. That was fast. Yeah, it looked like uh, uh, Murphy from the side of uh, Pitzer did DC. He reconnected right away, but it looks like he is still having connection issues. So hopefully this won't be too long as we get a little bit more delay into our, our, our life here. But it's, you know, it, it, it's not League of Legends if there's not a delay. I mean, come on now. I mean, if you watch LCK at all, you know that, like... <laughs> If unless you you can show up like thirty minutes late to the broadcast and you will you'll still be there for the first game pick and ban so you'll be good. Well, some worlds games you can still do that. For <sighs> yeah, I I, 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 I rem ain't frightened. Yeah, it's like I remember the old days, olden days when they would be on pause for hours and hours. Subaru Frost versus CLG. Yeah. E e e I remember that. Oh, and yeah. it looks like we are now unpausing after he is back in and loading into the game, and we're back in it. Let's see if we're going to see we go. an invade here from the side of Drexel, because it looks like they're ready for it already. They got that Blitzcrank. Yeah, I was about to say, they got the Blitzcrank. That's a, it's kind of standard protocol whenever you run a Blitzcrank. You have to go invade, but I think Pitzer, uh, they're privy to it. They have a little bit of information thrown out as well with their one ward being thrown. So they know if a, if a Blitz is going to come, they're going to be ready for it. They might even be able to counter it, because they do have an, uh, an, a Leona on their side. So if anyone walks up, you should bop them in the face, stun them, stun lock them for a little bit, maybe just enough. Level one, a lot of damage, can uh, be thrown down pretty easily. Yeah, and there was wards d thrown out from both sides there too. So it looks like everybody trying to play safe. Uh, Drexel did, or Drexel did look for the double wards. So they had the ward in the tri bush as well. They didn't see anybody, so they just fall back. And it looks like we're gonna have a pretty. Pretty safe standard start for everyone. Um, the only big difference I see so far is we do have an Ash with a Doran shield versus a Vayne with a Relic shield. Uh, Relic shield ju did just get changed in the patch today, so it's going to be interesting to see if the those two item differences are going to have any real impact early on. Yeah, they didn't change the gold amount that you get, so the gold I think is still going to be relevant, but it did change the amount of heal that you get. I believe for ranged characters, it is now 50% heal rate compared to melee characters. So not as much sustain being thrown their way with that Relic Shield on the vein. But Squishy Carry is going to keep trying it to get that amount of gold build up and try to transition into the mid game a little bit earlier. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm actually, I am kind of surprised, but hold on, we have a Leaf uh, Blade already going in here. That's actually just Leona doing some damage here. Nice zoning by Rikiri, but, uh, Rikira, I should say, but there's still a lot of damage being thrown oh. onto Drexel. And there come the playful taunts, and already this flat lane is getting spicy, and we're only two minutes in. I like it. I'm, I'm excited for this one. It looks like we have Fizz kind of doing some poke down here. It looks like he's just clearing out the waves. Nothing too crazily excited happened yet with just the second waves coming in now. Looks like Blitz is going in now. Misses the fist, oh. though. Uh, but yeah. here comes the re-engage from the Yona. They're, they are not level two yet, so Port Port going really low here. There was no stun to follow up after the engage. So, uh, unfortunately for them, they weren't able to do a whole lot there. If they would have had that stun, and they would have bolted level 2, I feel like we would have seen first blood right there. Yeah, more than likely. Yeah, level 2 is where the, I mean, the real jump actually comes in from Leona, but not going to see it this time around. The level spike we hit, on, uh, hit for Drexel earlier, and they weren't able to counter that with a level 2 initiation, so or a counter engage, I should say. So. Yeah, and here comes again. Now. Yeah, it comes back again. There's a Night Pop this time. Flash from the Ash. Vayne's going to follow up. Squishy Carry going for the kill. Gets fisted back. That might be enough to keep him alive, but here comes the double flash back oh. in. First Blood goes to the side of Pitzler with that beautiful engage. I mean, it was a little awkward, I guess, I feel like. They used a little bit more summoners than they probably needed to. They ended up using three sums, both the Leona summoners and the Flash from Vayne. Uh, both junglers are on the top side of the map, though. It looks like they're about to engage in onto each other. A little bit of vision gives Sejuani the ability to get out of there, but they're going to chase this. There's a Flash from the J4. Misses the knockup, though. Yeah, and... Sejuani is just going to be careful. Now on the bot side as well, the uh, Leona and uh, Vayne also went in onto the Blitzcrank. So 
A lot of action going across all sides of the map, but so far Pitzer still has that one kill, and it looks like they still want more blood in the bot side, but Leona, poor port, is getting a little bit low on health, has no more uh, no more sustain with the health pots, does have the relic shield from Vayne, but again, it is 50% uh, uh, health, uh, health regeneration or health over to the uh, and their support, considering you know, Vayne is ranged. So it's going to be difficult, but so far... Yeah, and so they're still only one kill. Yeah, sure. yeah, still only one kill. But we do see uh, they're taking some advantage with this as the J four is taking the Krugs on the red side right Ooh, now up Fizz. top. Fizz looks like he's in a little bit of trouble. Looks like Zig's outplaying him a little bit there. Zig got a little bit too aggressive. Thought he was doing crazy stuff. Had to blow his flash there. Missed that part though. Sorry about that. Yeah, both uh, both uh, mid laners did use their flash. So the, it's going to be equal. Now, Captain Communist does have the Ignite, but as I talk Here about that... Here comes the gank bottom with the Yeah, we Khan coming to bot side. The Flash comes in from the Blitzcrank immediately, gets uh, uh, condemned away, but it looks like there's not going to be enough here. There's not enough. Oh, the stun finally comes out from the Sejuani, and that should be enough to seal at least Leona's fate. A good gank from uh, the Sejuani. I can't, I'm not even going to try his name. It's so long. <laughs> I was just going to say Khan. Yeah. The, la, 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 <laughs> I mean, I'm not I'm not gonna go that far about it, but it is a uh, it is con to me because uh, that is the the easiest part on the uh, ending part. Uh, yeah. There is the. But that was a good time gank. Yeah. No vision there for the for the bot side of Pitzler. And then, then there's going to be the evened up kill. There's still 500 gold in the lead off of that first kill onto the Ash. But Ash is catching back up on CS, so there's not really a big CS difference actually anywhere across the board. Everybody's about the same. Yeah, so far, yeah, it's been pretty It's been pretty even on both sides. Of course, uh, Pitzer did get the first blood, so they are a little bit ahead in the uh, in the gold area. But uh, other than that, it is pretty even. Pitzer is doing, uh, overall, just a little bit better in farm as well. And that's you know, equating to a little bit of gold, but mostly it is coming from that first blood. And uh, so far, like I said, it's been an even game. And this is actually kind of, you know, I just actually noticed... Um, I did not notice this before. Uh, the the Nasus has an uh, an ancient coin, or the um, not the ancient coin. It's the um, yeah, no, no, yeah, it is an ancient coin. coin. Yeah, for extra gold. He also did run Clepsomancy. I saw that in the loading screen. So he is going for a huge amount of just early early gold uh, um, uh, acquiring. I guess you could say to uh -oh. try to get that get those oh items as fast as possible. My game froze there for a second. I was trying to figure out what the heck happened. Nasus went in for his stack, and it was just like froze but we're good back we're back in here we're good but yeah that is an interesting build that i have been seeing it's actually really interesting now though because of how ancient coin worked they used to go talisman of ascension on nasus to give them that extra movement speed to run people down but that game that item is no longer in the game since of the uh, the i the uh, rework the site changes actually because there's no more site stones that's actually a really interesting thing as a support player for me at least but uh it's a lot of difference in warding as well it's all built into your uh starting support item from your relic shield to your targon's brace builds uh once you get an gold to do the quest which used to give you little things and now gives you the the sight stone ability so you still have to go back to the fountain to recharge it but you'll actually be able to ward that way so it's a little interesting to see nasus using that build now even though it's com been completely reworked but we'll see how it kind of adds up to him i mean it's obviously a all about getting that gold to get your items later or get your items earlier so you can get to that all powerful nasus late game but yeah uh, nasus is actually getting altered into the wall right now as jockwin is kind of having his way with him nasus is completely ignoring Whenever he was farming, he was ignoring the Gnar, and that allowed him just to do as much damage as you see he's dished out so far. But at that same time, Nasus, he is farming and building up his Q, and I think that's his main goal because, again, he was just completely ignoring uh, auto-attacking Jaquin for a, a good while there. It, 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 it can be that tunnel vision you see on a lot of Nasus. It, it is all about those stacks. I mean, it, it's just that is your life, and so he's going for as many as he can. He's already up to 114 already. Uh, right before the eight minute mark so uh, oh. doing all right gets in dove now and there's the stock or the stopwatch right at six minutes or right after six minutes to use it obviously you can't use it before six minutes but good play by the nar you know like you said showcasing his prowess by being able to poke him down and abusing the straight farming Anasis as a fight breaks down in the bot lane Sejuani is back down there again Leona gets fisted back in and she goes down quite quickly uh, there's don't believe there's going to be any re-engage there, but another good roam from the jungle, uh, from the side of Drexel, to get another kill. So now they are up 3-1 after getting a kill on the top side and on the bottom side, almost yeah, simultaneously. The top, the top side shenanigans, that, that was just that was just the Nasus completely ignoring any sort of 
threat that Jacqueline really posed, which he does pose quite a bit of threat. And yeah, with the stopwatch, you have to keep that in mind. You can tower dive if you have a stopwatch. It is League of Stopwatches right now, and that's probably not going to change for a good while until until they drastically change its uh, its um, meaning to the game. But whenever you're that low, you can you cannot stay at the tower. So yeah, Nasus he goes down. That gives a kill over to Jacqueline. He's actually going to save his teleport for when he. If there's a, uh, some action in the bot side, but speaking of bot side, a very nice gank coming out from Khan, helping out, and that was a very nice uh, uh, rocket grab, by the way, by uh, uh, Raykiri, Rikira, I should say. I think I messed that up twice now. Rikira. But we have some action in the jungle right now. Yep, and they did. They were pinging this out a minute ago. They did see the J4 in the jungle, but Ziggs makes a good response. It may have been a little bit late, but it looks pretty close. Oh, good flash, but it doesn't matter because there's Squishy Carry on the vein to follow it back up. But and then another fly, another flash over the wall. But didn't he not just realize that his teammate just died to the vein over the wall? Oh, the Ash Arrow Whoa. almost hit, but the flash was beautiful. I barely missed him flashing it, but he did hit. He did flash it to save his life. I was wondering what the Fizz was doing there after watching his teammate flashed into the vein and die what he was planning to plan on do there as well but looks like rakira coming in trying to just stop this dragon it is an infernal drake so we're gonna see some contestion here but uh condemn comes out stuns him up these guys are all low good tumble to avoid the uh the fist there but here comes the follow-up this is gonna be another kill oh no his flash was still up miracle. so he's all right yeah miracle coming in to try and help but he has flash as well and is gonna have to flash over that wall in the 2v3 scenario yeah, that is something you have to really... I was talking about earlier in Champions like Squishy, uh, Squishy Carry. Uh, Vayne has been uh, nerfed this patch just a little bit, not a huge amount. The kit, obviously, is still the same. The purpose of Vayne is still the same. Um, but Vayne has been played a lot this preseason by pretty much any ADC main. And when you're that comfortable on Vayne, it can be extremely scary. But we have an engage possibly coming out on the bot side Ooh, here. Oh, and there's another flash burnt this time for the uh, the blitz grab. This time, Leona ju just having to use that to get out of it. And, uh, it looks like they're putting a lot of pressures on. The whole bunch of summoners are down for all the sides. But and then we have another DC. This time it's going to be Khan on that Sidzwani on the disconnect. So we're going to see how long it takes for him to can get back in here. But we're looking at. Uh, a game that's at 10 almost 11 minutes and we're only separated by about 900 gold uh how are you feeling about this game so far it's kind of it, it's interesting but it looks like the the top lane advantage is definitely going in favor of uh drexel yeah no drexel do, has the top lane advantage they they're not doing horrible on in the mid lane in regards to farm i mean obviously captain communist did give away a kill but the real story is this three and O vein right now at 87 farm uh, 87 farm not a huge amount um a miracle is out farming the vein but it doesn't matter when you have an infernal drake already on your side and three kills on uh in vein's arsenal vein just went back um uh, picked up uh the zeal and the bf sword so has quite a bit of damage behind her as well now so this is going to get very scary for drexel if they cannot shut down this uh this vein and they've tried a little bit in the top lane with the nasus but that i mean that's mostly just jacqueline playing jacqueline or playing the nar i should say um but you can get it you can you can die as nasus and still come into the mid link mid game very powerful you just gotta farm your q and he's doing that very well he's uh, already has his sheen going to be transitioning that into uh into the triforce eventually possibly possibly a uh, an ice uh, an iceborne gauntlet but typically you do see the um the triforce coming out from a top lane nasus who just wants to farm 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 and then you know like we were talking about half health one shot with the one q in the mid game yeah and that's exactly what he's looking to do he has 180 stacks from his siphoning strike already going into this game uh and we're almost just at 11 minutes we're still waiting it looks like we had two dcs there but this time it's still the sejuani disconnected waiting for her sejuani to reconnect but um also something i want to point out here that's going to be interesting to see since since of this relic shield uh build that everybody's been going uh this vein now has the upgraded version of it which is celestial's eye which is what i was talking about when you meet that quest gold cap you're able to actually it changes into a sight stone itself so technically this vein has a sight stone on them and they could actually really 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 abuse vision with it if they if the vein is up on putting their wards down as they go across the map and i didn't even think about that until just now that is something completely new that is going to be really interesting to see if there's going to be people placing more wards down or not because of that popularity of the relic shield for your this will be great ADC. in solo queue whenever the uh, adcs have two wards on their warding totem and then they have those for their wards too yeah and then you get extra frustrated hopefully you won't be seeing that and i hope that squishy carry so far has been playing the vein very well i would like to know i think how 
has awareness to place their wards because yeah that is an interesting factor in the game now is that uh with i mean i don't know how many adcs are going to be still using the relic shield but it is how it is right now and it's really easy uh when to to build up into that uh celestial eye so uh yeah a lot of vision can be had in that bot lane on the side of uh of uh pitzer and that can i mean that can completely foil khan uh, Squishy Carry has already showed that he can get out of sticky situations. He can, he can tumble where he needs to. He's tumbled quite. He's actually he's not only flashed out of a um, out of a crystalline arrow from afar, coming whenever he's in the dragon pit with with the uh, Captain Communist's fizz. But he's also tumbled away from uh, Rakira's um, rocket grab. So he has he has the reaction. He has the where the the, the awareness to be able to dodge these when you have vision uh, uh, and just scatter throughout your entire jungle. So Khan can't gank you, that means he's going to be playing extremely well in that bot side, very comfortable on the side of Pitzer's bot side. Yeah, and we're still sitting here waiting on the reconnect, guys. Sorry about that. I am kind of playing with the Fog of War map as we're sitting here. Uh, another thing to point out when we were talking about Vision before is actually the uh, Murphy on this J4 does have the tracker, or the, yeah, the tracker's knife is the warding totem, right? I'm doing that right. Yeah, it is. That, uh, yeah, yeah, I was making sure I said that right when I looked at it. I was like, he does have that, so they do have a little bit of Vision going down from him as well. He has, do, uh, he has been uh, invading quite well, too, I feel like. He's been kind of as... As Sijuani was making the ganks on bottom, he was making sure he wasn't able to get there, so he was on top, taking farm. Uh, he might need the help with this Gnar, though, I feel like, because uh, Nasty's is starting to struggle, obviously, after that solo kill. Uh, it, will, it will really determine on how fast that Gnar can get down that turret as well. But um, overall, we're looking all right. It looks like Fizz going for the uh, the Lich Bane first is what it looks like, as if judging by his items. I can't tell exactly. Yeah, that, yeah that, would, that would be Lich Bane. Yep. Yep, yep. And the Essence Reaver is going to come out for the Ash, and uh, we'll see, kind of decide where these guys want to go. Once these big items hit, we'll see if a team's going to try and take the real advantage here and try and, you know, really break open a turret, get that first turret goal, really get themselves rolling and try and control these objectives. Obviously, Pitzler has that advantage with the early Infernal Drake that they got, and then that little bit of a, like, uh, that odd misplay of uh, Squishy Carry rolling around and killing everybody that flashed over to the Dragon Pit as well. But uh, it, it, it can be a problem. Them, like you mentioned before with the vein vein veins can are known uh, even with nerfs and even before they were before she was played you know by everyone like it was in preseason uh she, she veins are known for snowballing games very very quickly and uh just kind of hard carrying doesn't matter what you think doesn't matter who you have when a vein gets about three or four items they're pretty much unstoppable in some cases so yeah yeah I mean, if, if whenever you start out before, before 11 minutes technically about 10 minutes at three you know you can get those uh you can get those items extremely quickly yeah and I also have, she has a call on there too i didn't even see that yeah yeah she is she's just getting as much gold as possible uh I, without taking kleptomancy that's going to be a huge amount of gold no not to mention the um uh, the relic shield helping squishy carry out as well from port ports leona but um we haven't really talked too much about this mid lane besides the Fizz getting, uh, getting taken out in the Dragon Pit. Um, uh, Ziggs doing very well. Uh, hasn't died, given two assists over to the team and keep it up in farm. And uh, just kind of strolling uh, stro strolling along. He's done his job in the mid lane by not feeding Captain Communist's Fizz. That was the main goal. Uh, if, I were, if I were Pitzer's mid laner, that would be my main goal is to not feed the Fizz. That is the worst thing you can do. Uh, that's almost equating to feeding a, <laughs> a vein, which has happened. So Pitzer, I feel like, in, in, uh, I feel like they, they have the, uh, an Infernal Drake. Um, they may be getting a... Actually, they don't have any towers push, but they do have a very good tower push in the mid lane with the Ziggs, as you can satchel charge. You don't even need to take it down all the way, only to a quarter health. You can satchel charge it, satchel charge it all the way down. I feel like they are setting themselves up for a, uh, an early tower as well pretty soon once they start uh, getting going and... Uh, see a little bit more action from Murphy, especially in this mid lane. It is hard to gank a Fizz, but they can manage that one. More than likely, we'll be able to take that uh, mid lane tower down very quickly. Um, but so far, everything going very well for Pitzer. And uh, we're still on a game pause. So uh, we have a lot of time to talk about pretty much everything in this game at the moment. Uh, pretty much. Uh, what's your favorite change of the patch? I, I don't know if you've read all of them, but uh, so far, what's your favorite change of the patch? We'll go with that because it's, it's the technically early patched game Ezreal, Ezreal, Early game Ezreal nerfs. Those were huge. Mm -hmm. the, I think it went from, what was it, uh, um, 60, 
I think it was I think it was 60 damage to 35. Those were that's a pretty huge his uh pretty huge damage on his Q. His uh his late game is still the exact same. Is uh, once you get level five on Mystic Shot, still the exact same damage. But level early early levels one through three, huge huge difference in laning phase. Yeah, and I think obviously that is due to the kleptomancy rune, which they did change as we saw. They reduced it for uh, range champions being able to proc it as much as well. So, so that should hurt the uh the Ezreals overall because they were becoming extremely popular i mean it was just it was like i mean it's like worlds every year there's Ezreal. Ezreal becomes back back into the meta because it's Ezreal and people like him but uh well flashy players like their champions like that lee sin and Ezreal, they create views they create really good opportunities for champions or for players to really um express how good they are at just mechanic mechanics of a game so yeah i mean it, it makes sense as far as as far as a marketing uh, stance goes. Yeah, and as, as, as Ezreal would say, it's all skill, guys. It's all yeah, skill. Yeah, yeah. pretty so, much. So, but we are finally back into the game. It looks like uh, our Sejuani is still DC'd, it looks like. I did not see if he reconnected, but uh, oh, there he is. Hey. But hey, that's said, good. Said, yeah, they decided to go and start up the game anyways. That might have been a time constraint. Um, possibly, I actually didn't get to see how far they let it go down, but I know there is only a certain amount of time. You can be paused because we don't want to be here all night, of course, and I know... Um, I know the players don't either, so the, there are there are rules set up. But we're going back to that top lane right now, and we're seeing exactly what's been happening. Um, uh, the, the Nasus not even paying mind to the Nar and just auto attacking the minions, farming up that Q and trying to trying to restore his health with his passive. Might have a little bit of a fight here, but he's actually just going to disengage once again. Here's that gank in the mid lane. Yep, and there comes the gank in the mid lane. Yeah, exactly the time. Does he actually get the trade? He does oh. get the trade with the ignite on him under the turret. A little bit of a hasty dive with the J4 ulti there. But they do get the kill, and now they're going to try and push this turret. There are three members. So their bot lane did rotate up. This is that push you were talking about with the satchel charge from, from Ziggs. They might be able to get this down pretty low. Uh, just Sejuani there for the time being. A little bit of damage from Squishy Terry going in. Ooh, and the Enchanted Ooh. Arrow just barely misses everyone as it goes a little bit on the inside. Uh, but they should be able to hold this turret now. But uh, that was a pretty decent dive. It would have been more favorable if they didn't lose the J4 in it. But they do get about half that mid turret's health down, which is very, very important. Mid turret gives you just so much control over the map, giving you better vision and stuff like that. So, uh, obviously, I believe that gank was set up because uh, of the lack of vision from the side of Captain Communist. He only has... It looks like he has almost no vision around him except in his own jungle and then on the bottom side of his uh or on the bottom side of the lane there he has a little bit but uh, j4 obviously came in from the top side so abusing a little bit of that vision there as we go back into it, it looks like top lane still farming as with bot lane and that was a random flash by that leona it looks like she was trying to go for some sort of crazy engage over the wall that there. was the hex tech flash oh it was a hex tech flash okay yeah we are less bad i'm less upset about that but here comes another engage this time murphy gets seen and he gets slowed down a little bit. The Sejuani ulti does miss though, so there is no stun to follow it up. And he's gonna make it. Murphy's gonna make it out just fine, as the bot lane is uh, from uh, Drexel is actually moving up right now. Blitzcrank and Ash were both there, trying to respond to the J4 getting caught out a little bit in the jungle. But he finally found that vision from them. Uh, that they where their vision is and it's all on that bottom side of the map. As Sejuani looks like she's gonna look to set up more vision down there by getting the scuttle. And, oh, this yeah. is going to be a huge fight. Here comes yeah, Fizz, too. a lot of grouping coming down here. And, and there's the like Ash Arrow. Scary. He's caught. Yeah. There's no hope when you get hit by an Ash Arrow no. followed up by the Fizz, the, the Chum the Waters. Enchanted Arrow and the Chum the Waters is just over as a vein. Uh, good yeah, rotations, actually, though. Yeah, he did have his Flash and Heal as well, but uh, either was not able to use it or just saw that it was going to be pointless because that Chum of the Waters, once it lands, yeah, it, like you said, it's going to be really hard to come back from that one, especially... Um, when you're pinned up against the wall anyways with the Enchanted Crystalline Arrow. So um, that does mean Switch Carry does have his... Uh, hold on, oh, is this going to be a solo kill for the support? Uh, is it 1v1 going on there? I was watching Nar and Nasus fighting top. There comes the heal out from Miracle, and it's going to oh, be enough no, to keep him alive. No. But actually, it looks like it's going to be Sejuani showing up in the back end. There's too many minions here. Why would you do this? Oh, Exhaust as well. That's kind of a waste there, unfortunately. But Miracle does get the... It's not a 1v1, but Miracle survives long enough to get the kill on the Ionic, giving him a little bit more gold back in his pocket. He has mostly assists so far. That's his first kill. 
No, that actually technically was a 1v1 because uh, Khan did not get an assist on that one. No. He did not touch. Did he, not touch he, was, only, only, he was there for yeah. moral support. Yeah, only made him go. Actually, only made him go back into Miracle. Poorport had, would have got away from the uh, away from Ash, the Miracle, if Khan did not come down. Because uh, Khan blocked off the path, and that allowed, and made Poorport go back. And then in. here comes a gank mid again. The the yeah. flag dash, and this oh instantly comes the Sejuani out, instantly cleansed as well nice by Zegs. Really well done there. Doesn't want to get caught by Chum the Waters as a follow up. And that's something that's really scary from this Drexel lineup is they have a lot of stuns in CC. Uh, good choice there from the Zigs to pick up the cleanse. He's probably going to be using it a lot this game. Uh, Vayne will probably have to work into a Mercurio Scimitar at some point though as well to help get rid of some of those stuns. They're just, you know, you got Gnarlt, you got Sejuani Alt, you got Chum the Waters from Fizz, you got uh, Ash Arrow. I mean, there's just, everyone has some sort of CC on this team. Yeah, there is a quite a bit of catch there. Uh, as you see, uh, Ziggs throwing out the, uh, the big bomb down on the boss side, not hitting anybody. Yeah. I don't even, even think he cleared any minions either. No, no, he, I, think he, I think he missed them. He missed everything. I think he was maybe trying to interrupt uh, recalls or something. That's the only thing I could think of of why he would just throw that randomly. As Ash comes in again, there's this uh, the stun from the arrow, followed by the flash and grab oh by Blitzcrank. This duo lane is starting to pop off after Vayne going 3-0 and early on. Uh, shortly five minutes later, she has two deaths to her name and is now uh, behind a little bit on farm, not too terribly much, as it looks like they're going to start up the dragon on the side of Drexel, and uh, it looks like they have the vision for it, except for the fact that they didn't clear the pit, so there's actually vision in the pit for the side of Pitzler, uh, but they are going to get the, the dragon down, even though Leona tried to throw the ult there to try and steal it at the oh, last cringe. second. Oh, nice flash though by the Ziggs over the wall, and uh, that actually, he was through the... Uh, the little uh, the raptors, so yeah, Blitzcrank was able to only grab one of those and not the little zigs. Yeah, that was actually really, really well done on escaping there by the zigs. But now here comes the counter push. There's four members of Drexel in the mid lane here, and it looks like they're going to finally try and push in it. Not everyone hitting the turret just yet, but now here comes three members of the other team. All right, with Nasus from the top, this is a huge oh, fight. God. That J4 ulti is going to lock in the Blitz. Blitz goes down. Squishy Carry going in on the back line. There's the stop block, or stopwatch used by Miracle, but he's not going to live. Buys a little bit of time maybe for Sejuani to get out, but here comes the counter push. After a walk down Rome from the Nasus, they're going to get first turret, and Nar is going to end up trading a turret in the top lane, which is going to be helpful, but it looks like they're not stopping at one, and the side of Pitzler is going to go for the second turret, and there's almost, there's nothing that Drexel can do here, and they're going to go down, and they actually haven't even killed the top turret yet. Uh, Nar just about to knock it down but uh, look at this squishy carry already rotating to the bot lane and pushing down this bot turret as well this is some really impressive rotations from the side of uh pitzer they're doing some really good work here like obviously the countering saving their zigs in the mid lane with some good flashes uh and then obviously following up with some great counter engage and now a lot of objectives taken two turrets in the middle uh that bottom turrets at uh how much health does that bottom turret have like 200 the minions are still going at it <laughs> Yeah, no, there's a lot of damage just done by Pitzer. Very nicely played by them. It was a nice engage. I think Murphy caught three people with his Cataclysm. And yeah, the roam down from Nasus made a huge difference as well. And with Ziggs there at, uh, on their side, they can also take down these turrets extremely fast. And they just push in the two inner turrets, uh, the two middle turrets, I should say. Oh, that was a miscue by Jacqueline. But uh, quick, uh, quick work of the two middle turrets. Uh, again, with Ziggs there, able to do that so fast. And they... And yeah, there, that's the thing. There's not much wave clear on the side of Drexel, uh, Drexel, and that's something they have to think about. If they get caught out, if they can't fully engage and survive uh, or, or disengage, whatever they need to do, if anybody dies on their side, that is just a little bit less um, wave clear that they have to their advantage. Because Fizz, not a great wave clear. You have to kind of get into the enemy lines to wave clear and into their face. Uh, Miracle can, but Miracle's dead. Miracle died. There's really nothing that Sejuani can do. Shockland wasn't there. Can do a little bit with his Q, but uh, other than that, there's Blitzcrank, and that is you're not going to rely on a Blitzcrank to farm uh, to clear a wave underneath the turret. So anyone, if if Miracle could be taken out, 
and Pitzer can push their advantage onto a turret, they're more than likely going to take that turret because just of, of the amount, uh, or the lack of wave clear on the side of Drexel. Yeah, that's where that whole mid mage control that everybody talked about for, you know, LCS and stuff like that. But we have another fight breaking out. It looks like Port Port and Murphy are going to go in on the 2v2. They go in on Captain Copnus. He gets low. The ultimate from Zix almost gives him with that big bomb. But it looks like Vayne's going to clear up the turret in the bot, play, bot lane as well as Blitz and Sejuani are going to try and peel off here to get everyone back out. But it looks like uh, Squishy Carry is still going on there with the farm. Leona gets fisted by the Blitzcrank. This might have been a bad idea. And instantly Murphy goes back in. And uh, Miracle is going to get caught up by Le Leona as well. Sejuani trying to come in for the save. Does end up getting the trade onto the J4. But I don't think... It might take a while for them to kill the Sejuani, but I feel like Sejuani is er, not going to win this fight. She does do a lot of damage, uh, and Ziggs did just miss a bomb there, so it could be a lot closer than we thought. But uh, Nar's actually going to come up from the bottom here. Is Sejuani oh, going to live long God. enough to get under turret and not die? Oh, dodges spells again. There's the satchel charge. Almost enough. It is enough. Nar finally shows up, though, and is going to get the redemption kill. And he might actually get two. He misses the Q, and here comes the teleport from the Nasus. So that should be the end of that. That was quite the back and forth there of people fighting in the jungle. And Vayne and, uh, actually did die and get this tier 2 yeah, bottom Yeah, I was well. saying, all the while that happened, uh, Vayne was just split pushing that entire time. So got two turrets in the bot side. Inner turret being uh, the, the last turret to get before Captain Communist finally came down. And that was after Captain Communist spawned. He was actually not even paying attention to the bot side until he had he died and had it was already there. So that was a big pickup again from Pitzer. Four turrets to two right now, and they're taking command of this game at 4,000 gold ahead of Drexel right now. Yeah, so a lot of moves being made. Very good macro play by Pitzer. Yeah, they're doing really well. That gold lead is, is showing that almost 4K up, a little bit, almost exactly 4K up. But uh, Squishy Carry, knowing that he just needs to push these lanes, it looks like he is going to go... He does have the Static Shiv already. That has been something really popular I've noticed on almost all ADCs, using that for the wave clear. But now in the middle, it looks like Nasus is in trouble, throws out the Wither onto Miracle, but that's not going to be enough in the 3v1. Uh, Murphy is not going to be able to save him, but it looks like in the bot lane, I didn't even get the C, but it looks like Leona and Vayne caught out the Fizz and gets a kill there, so the tr kills traded for both teams here. Top lane going down for Pitzer, and the mid laner for, for Drexel going down, but they are going to make this uh, three-man push mid. They do get a mid turret, a little bit better of a play for Drexel, or a little bit better of a trade for them, get them a little bit closer in gold, but again, uh, it looks like Fizz, Fizz is having some problems getting caught, caught out, it feels like. Captain Communist is either landing those ulties and it's great, or he's getting baited into fights he doesn't want to be in, it feels like. But he has a Lich Bane right now, so he feels like if he lands anything, he can go in and kill somebody, uh, no problem. That's not the case. He's not extremely powerful right now. Yeah, he has Lich Bane, and um, he has all the workings for a Rabadon's Deathcap as well. But it's not really, the power is still not there. When you have, um, in, in bot side, he was going against Port Port and Squishy Carry. I didn't, I didn't get to see if um, if he caught out Squishy Carry and Port Port just happened to be around or what would happen if he even saw Port Port. But you can't, you cannot 1v2 Leona and Evane. They're too mobile and they lock you down a little bit too much. But as I say that, Infernal Drake, it is started up here by Drexel. Looks like they are going to try to pull it out of the pit. But. Pitzer, they are in the area as well. The, the, Nasus does not have teleport. Yeah, he's walking ulti. down. Here comes yeah, Squishy he Carry is. from the back. He actually dodges two ulties there, both Sejuani and the Chundle Waters, but it's not going to be enough as they all flash in on top of him. Nar's going to try and 1v4 the rest of the team. He's doing a fairly decent job already. Leona ulti comes out and stuns both Fizz and Blitzcrank. Oh, man, Sejuani's still alive. Finally goes down as the Nasus comes down, and here comes the, the beat stick as they finally get it going. Uh, the the Infernal Drake does go to the side of Drexel. They did try and focus that down with their Ash, and it might turn out to bite them in the butt, as that's an ace going to the side of Pitzer, and that's a triple kill for the Ziggs with that big bomb that started all off when they started the fight. He probably he hit three people with that bomb, so he took about three people, I'd say about at least a third of health from off of each of them, so that was a huge chunk of damage. And then, even though Nasus wasn't there, he saw what was going on and ran his little dog butt all the way down there and ended up bopping a couple fools as well. So that's a real, really chaotic fight, and I feel like, uh, obviously, with the inhibitor going down, Pitzer does come out on top with this uh, push, even though yeah, they lost a dragon. And that's what I was referring to with their with their comp right now, is if they don't get completely wiped, if if Drexel cannot take them out with their engage, then if, if they counter engage, if they're left to farm or go under and uh, 
push into a turret, I should say, siege a turret, they're going to take as much as humanly possible because they have... Uh, well, I mean, Murphy Murphy did that uh, in the middle by, middle by himself, but on the bot side, they had they had Ziggs you know, using the satchel charge to shove anything to shove the turrets, and they were able to pick up uh, the inhibitor off that as well. There is so much in the arsenal of Pitzer for sieging here that they have to be completely wiped off the map, or else they're going to take something. And Drexel so far has not been able to stop them from doing that. Yeah, it, it, like you said, it's just that they they are a much better siege comp. But both uh, actually, they have a bunch of people that are really good at sieging. Vayne's not too bad because yeah, she can she so, can tumble yeah. out of stuff. Zig's really really good because he's got that range and the satchel charge and his passive to give him a little bit of that extra ability to damage the turrets as well. And then you have Nasus. Nasus destroys turrets like they're nothing especially at a point in the game like this where he has 516 stacks here we are at 25 minutes in this game he is hitting like a nasus is supposed to be hitting at this point in the game and a huge engage on the miracle murphy cuts him cut, catches him out while he's trying to get stuff going on blitz with the fist to try and save him but the uh, bomb from ziggs shows up and cleans that up and squishy carry cleans up the kill on the blitzcrank as well and this might very well be a baron setup they have the vision they've cleared out most of the vision uh murphy's a little low but uh there's a gnar on the bottom of the side of the map and it's a 5v3 this is gonna be a baron murphy, for the side of pitson yeah, murphy is higher level than khan right now so if there is a smite battle murphy should be able to win that given that they do have proper timing but it's not even gonna matter and you also have a vein there a vein can take out a baron so quickly with the silver bolts with the proccing the true damage of uh, percentage health true damage uh, that was an easy pickup by pitzer and a very easy decision to call if you have two members of drexel down go to that baron take him out now or take him out quickly and it looks like Wow, that was, that was like yeah. only one auto attack on the Captain Communist. It took a third of his health bar, by the way. Yeah, he he, he popped his, uh, the vein pop, squishy carry popped ulti and rolled in there to try and do some damage. And it went really, it, it, it obviously went really well for him because that, that fizz instantly jumped away to try and get out. Uh, Blitz fist missed, but the Ash Hour comes out afterwards. Shum the Waters goes out as well, but it hits only on Leona, so that's uh, not going to no, do a whole lot. And now Drexel has to deal with the Siege. Look at that. One Q. Look at that turret just obliterated off the face of the earth each of them did almost a quarter of the damage to it it felt like every time they hit it was just one two three four and gone this siege is ridiculous at this point yeah, now they have super minions or not empowered minions i should say well they have super minions on the bot side let's yeah. not forget about that those are shoving in and just if they're keeping drexel on the top side they have to shove somebody down to the bot side to get that to take care of those super minions pushing into the base but so with this baron it's going to be even harder to repel the siege because they have these empowered minions now there's so much so much that uh, Pitzer can throw at Drexel's towers right now that I don't think they're going to be able to stop him because if the wave clear was bad before, it's even worse now. Yeah, you have to, they basically have to put Miracle Bottom to clear out that wave because there's no one else can, that can handle the super minions or uh, with everything else. Like, Fizz is trying to just do regular wave clear and it takes him a minute just to do mid wave or mid lane here. So, uh, but the side of Pitzer does go back to buy a uh, pretty collective play there. They could have kept pushing with the Baron buff and doing everything they did or trying to end the game right there, but they go back. They probably all had at least a thousand gold in their inventories and now they're back with a, yeah, that's a rapid fire cannon finish on the vein too so this is gonna be interesting yeah they're just straight engage is all she wants to do is squishy yeah. carry just rolling in and doesn't care if you're a tank doesn't care who you are there's the cataclysm uh it looks like the oh sedgwani all hits onto the vein followed up nice. by a crucial oh, oh wow that was beautiful so many chain cc's on there now they need to win the fight nars almost mega he really needs to be mega right now so he can get that alt off but it's not gonna be enough it looks like miracle's still alive finally going down zigs in the background laying down the bomb hate he's joining into the turret nasus with the tanking there uh they were able to blow up squishy carry but they are just so far behind they're unable to handle both the other two carries being Ziggs and Nasus, and they're looking to end this game right now. Wither goes on to the Nar, but he's just gonna use his stacks to end the game, and that's it, guys. After 28, just under 29 minutes, we have a 21 to 16 victory for Pitzer, going up 1-0 in this best of three. Yeah, very exciting game, and good job on Pitzer. They are starting out the season so far so good. It was best of three, so we're gonna see if they can make that same magic happen in game number two but we have to get there first we're going to set up the lobby so stick around my name is joshua fekes quest i'm here with s rough we'll be back in just a moment we'll be right back guys
right now and uh, we can get this going, no problem.